By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today it is Tuesday and that means another episode, another game for you from the Camel Trophy in Arnhem, the old school tournament, when we still could see each other face to face, mano a mano. But we have reached the final so this is going to be our last and final episode and in this final we see on the left side we see martin and martin he is a veteran he has seen many finals he has won the biggest old school tournaments in the netherlands he has been to um to sweden i believe to noobcon i mean this guy has seen it all has done it all and now he's in the finals again and he's here with a uh, black white and red deck and what's really nice to note about this this is there is no blue there is no blue power so we have a finalist that doesn't play with blue power that's very refreshing to see then on the right side we have somebody who is in his first old school magic the gathering tournament final we have gideon and the nice thing about gideon's deck is you could have seen it in action in the quarterfinals and the semi-finals so there's actually a link popping up right now taking you to the playlist of the camel trophy because if you've missed those matches they are worth looking back they were pure fireworks and i've enjoyed gideon's deck quite a lot in this tournament so thank you for bringing it to the table and like i said this is his first i believe his first finals in an old school magic tournament so his first chance to get a title and to get in with the big boys so um i'm going to do a very short deck deck since i don't have any lists of these decks i have a little idea i can tell you what their decks are about as far as i can tell with my limited knowledge so I repeat my limited knowledge. <laughs> but if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. Check the description below, click the timestamp, and you'll go straight to the games of this finals. For now, we are going to talk a deck deck. The first deck that I would take a look at is the white, black, and red good stuff deck piloted by Martin, the player on the left. And he's basically put in some, you know, very strong creatures. Juzum Jin, Sedge Trolls, also has some factories packing. And the interesting thing is with Martin is he always plays with Diamond Valleys. So I just find it, I just wanted to point that out. So his Diamond Valley is a way for him to just give him that time, you know, because life equals equals time, at least in my opinion. So it just will give him that lifespan that he needs to finish his opponent. And also, I think the Juzam is a nice example because sometimes these, these creatures that hurt yourself can kind of get in your way. You see that with Surrender Befreed as well. The nice thing is with Diamond Valley, it gives you an out. Obviously, it's not your goal to play a Juzam Jin and kill your own 5-5, but you'd be surprised how many situations there are in old school magic where it's actually useful. You'll also see that, for example, Example with swords to plows here so with players playing their uh, playing a swords on their own creature in response to a fireball that's being cast by an opponent you know life can buy you time and time can give you opportunity to eventually win a game you know so i just wanted to um note that and and you know keep an eye out for this diamond valley because i know martin is crazy about diamond valley he's really good at playing with diamond valley um also the balance here in this picture kind of stands for all the restricted cards that he's playing i believe you know he's playing black so we'll see mind twist and we'll see balance we will also see demonic tutor obviously um, i'm not sure if he plays with the wheel of fortune i don't know so we'll have to keep an eye out for that one uh, like i said in the introduction he's not playing with any blue so there's no blue power for gideon to worry about another nice note because he's playing this color combination it means he has access to lightning bolts and he's also playing with um with terrors so that means he actually has a lot of answers to creature threats and the deck of Gideon is very much based around creatures. So it's going to be interesting to see if um, if he can keep up with all the removal that Martin is playing on Gideon's creatures and if that will give him an advantage. Another thing that, that he, um, another interesting piece of his deck, which is not in this picture, is he's playing a red elemental blast main. I'm not sure how many he plays main, but he plays at least one main board. So that's of course very interesting. He knows, okay, the most threatening decks that I'm going to play against will have that blue power. So why not just play with a red elemental blast uh, main board so i'm really curious to also see how that red elemental blast is performing now the fact that he has reached the finals is already proof that playing a red elemental uh blast main board isn't a bad idea if you want to reach the finals and you don't have blue power or you don't want to play with blue power um that being said let's take a look at gideon's deck 
The deck of Gideon is an Urnum Ganon deck, but it's an Urnum Ganon deck with a twist. And I'm not going to really go into this extensively because we've already seen this deck in action in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. So if you want to have a more extensive deck deck, please check out uh, those matches. Uh, you can click on the playlist that will take you, or click on the link that will take you to the playlist of the Camel Trophy. But just really quickly, uh, Urnum Ganon, the idea of this deck is, you know, have some... Um, mana ramp going on, Birds of Paradise, Felwer Stone, whatever, quickly play out your big threat like an Urnum Jin, but in his case it can be a Surrender Befreed, it can be a Sarah Angel, he has a lot of beef in his deck, and then you want to play out an Armageddon to shut the whole thing down and kill your opponent, so in a nutshell, that is what Gideon is going to try to do, now he has blue in here, he has access to blue power, I believe he's playing with Brain Geyser, he's playing with Surrender Befreed, so blue is really big in this deck as well, so um, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting, you know, to, to see if Gideon has enough pressure on Martin, because Martin has a lot of answers, but I do believe Gideon has so much pressure, and of course he can get ahead with that blue power. It's really going to be interesting, but if, you know, he doesn't play with Mind Twist, for example, Gideon, so if Martin can find an early Mind Twist, that's usually a win. So it, it's interesting to, to take a look at these restricted cards, see when they are drawn, see the role that they're going to play. Uh, the same can be said about the Loa, by the way, they blow, both play with a um, Library of Alexandria. And in that case, I think Gideon is, is a little bit ahead on that one because he plays with Armageddon's. Now, remember, he only plays with two Armageddon's, so it's not... His deck can win games without Armageddon. We've seen that in a quarterfinal, uh, semifinal. He doesn't need the Armageddon to win, so remember that. He doesn't need it, but it can, really, it can give him a victory as well, especially in kind of a still mate situation so really looking forward to see how this deck is going to perform against martin's deck without further ado let's go to the finals beam me up scotty we have reached the finals the finals of the camel trophy and they're going to roll the dice to see who gets to start it looks like Gideon had the higher roll so he gets to start here drawing the first seven and it's Martin sitting on the left. So Martin is playing with that white, black, and red brew. Good stuff. And Gideon is playing with Ernim Gannon with a healthy splash of blue. That's a good start for him here. Ramping from the get-go with that Birds of Paradise. Will we see a Bolt the Bird? Nice altar, by the way. Yes, Bolt the Bird. We've got the Bob situation going. And they're tapping here for three, taking another damage. An early Surrender Befreed here. That could be really good for Gideon. And like I said in the introduction with the deck tech, his deck is, can be very aggressive. There is a Mind Twist for two. That is pretty painful. But he still has that Afreet. He can hit him now, going to 15, passing turn. Let's see what they can do. Playing a Mox and that Diamond Valley. Martin always plays with Diamond Valleys. I guess you could say it's his signature card. And I know that all his altars are done, I believe, by the artists themselves, by the way. It's really nice to look at. Pleasing for the eye, and there's a terror on the Surrender Befreed. Interesting that he's not waiting for his upkeep, making sure he doesn't draw into a counter spell. And of course, here we see, oh, a quick swords. I wanted to say, here we see the Sarah Angel, but it's already gone, and there's the Sedge Troll. And remember, Martin's deck has a lot of answers, which makes it so strong. So he's going to 17 now, Gideon, looking at his cards. Passing turn, he's deciding not to do anything with it, which makes you wonder, what can it be? Attacking now, and he goes to 14. And Martin's going to play another set stroll, so he's going to commit to the board here. And I think what Gideon needs is a balance. That would be really nice. But there are other options, of course. He's far from that. He's still on 14. Has a very powerful deck. Made it to the finals. There's an Armageddon. Interesting play. And that means that those Sedge Trolls are actually going to turn into Tutus. And after that, he's going to play that Mishra's Factory. Remember, it still has Summoning Sickness. So it's not going to be able to pump itself. That's probably why Gideon is not blocking with it. Finding a Tundra. Can he find removal for those trolls and it looked like it looks like martin is not going to attack instead he's going to play the chaos orb and is he going to use that chaos orb to flip on the factory to attack it looks like it is and there we go that's a hit nice technique putting gideon on six here 
And there's an Ancestral Recall, and maybe that can get him back into the game. Like Ancestral Recall does often. There we see the Urnum, and of course he doesn't have any forests. Ooh, but there's a quick sorts. Gideon now on six. Another Urnum. He needs the swamp, then he can regenerate and simply attack. Doesn't find one. Passing turn here. Attacking now. Interesting choice. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That means a follow up. Oh, and a disenchant on the Mox Pearl. Things are changing here and are looking really good for Gideon. He managed to get back into the game with that Ancestral Recall. And there we see a Soul Ring. That's not going to help. Martin at this point taking eight damage. He's going to four here. Doesn't want to sack his trolls, understandably. Waiting for black mana. And now he will have to jump block both. He has no choice. And now he, he is the player who needs something like a balance or a solution. And this is game, game over. Oh man, he was so close. But it's nice to see how Gideon got back into the game. And it's also nice or interesting to see this is what blue power does. You're, you've got no cards in hand, you top deck an Ancestral Recall and then you're lucky enough to find a big creature. And of course Martin is unlucky not to find that Swamp. If he would have found that Swamp, it would have been a whole different game. But especially after that second Urnum, ooh, you know it's going to be really, you know that it was going to be really, really tough for Martin. So these players are going to go sideboard, they're going to shuffle and we'll catch up with them in game number two. Game number two of the finals of the Camel Trophy here in Arnhem. And Gideon is so close to winning his first old school magic tournament. I mean, that would be a blast. And Martin has to win this game to still make a chance of that title of getting, of winning the Camel Trophy and winning that Camel Trophy cap that you see at the start of all of these movies. That's actually what these players are playing for. And of course, the signed camel. Ooh, a library of Alexandria here from Gideon. And that means he can start drawing cards. It is so essential for Martin that he finds an answer quickly. And there's his Savannah Alliance. That's not really his biggest worry here. His biggest concern is that Loa drawing, finding another really nice dual land, beautifully black border duels, but that's not going to save him at the moment. Not playing anything, just passing turn, no such troll, nothing. There's a lightning bolt on the Savannah Lines. Better to do that early than to regret it a few turns in. And let's see what Gideon, can he play a land? He can, he's playing a City of Brass. And he's playing another Savannah Lines. So he's keeping up the pressure. And of course that Loa is gonna give him enough steam to just keep going, throwing out threats. He doesn't really have to worry. Every turn he can just play two cards and draw two cards. There's a lightning bolt on the lines and another lines. Line number three is on the battlefield to join the party. And all that Martin uh, does at the moment is passing turn. I think his hand is full of removal. No Jews and Jin, no Setch Troll, no Chaos Orp or Strip Mine to get rid of that Loa. And what are we looking at now? It looks like he wants to play his Mox. Playing it out. And is he going to animate his factory? Because he seems to have enough mana to just put on some pressure. That's exactly what he does. 2-2 two, two, factory. Of course having the risk of catching a disenchant chain or whatever. A bolt I mean. And there we see a disenchant on the factory. Factory has gone. And will we see a lines that gets to survive at least a turn? No. No attack from the lines here. There was a Swords to Plowsiers on the Savannah lines, but it's not really that bad. All that Gideon is just doing is playing out all the removal or forcing Martin to play out all his removal and he can just keep drawing threats. Playing a Mox Ruby here and playing a Serendip a Freed and there's that Red Elemental Blast that he plays main board, probably this one. And he's probably included a few more from the sideboard. But you want to use those Red Elemental Blasts against the Blue Power. Taking a damage, playing an Urnum here. And there's a Terror End Step. Taking a turn. Can Martin find something? I hope so. I hope we get to see a real match. But of course, this is great news so far for Gideon playing a Sarah Angel. And how much removal can one player have? Well, <laughs> that's another piece of removal. I mean, this deck of Martin is just chock full of removal. It's amazing. 
and he finds a factory here. At least he has something to deal some damage to Gideon. Gideon is still on 23 or 24, I'm not sure, but playing a strip mine, immediately taking care of that card. And again, drawing cards from the Library of Alexandria, going to put some more pressure, but this time it's a bird. So maybe there is a moment for Martin to catch his breath, playing a set troll here. So that's a 3-3, three, three, but it's being quickly being answered by a Swords to Plowsiers. So both players have a lot of life, but that doesn't really count. He's passing turn. Interesting to see that he's not attacking with his factory this time, and there's an Hypnotic Spectre. I mean, you know, that can be the solution, but unfortunately there's that quick Swords to Plowsiers. And this is, of course, this of course is the problem when you're playing against an active Library of Alexandria. Your opponent has all the answers because they simply draw one card more than you do. And that is an unfair advantage think of it as a howling mind that only works for the for the person who, who cast a howling mind that would just be insane and here we see a black lotus stepping a lot will we see something interesting here oh there's a fireball and i have to give it to martin he's doing whatever he can to stay in the game but you can see his hand is empty and gideon's hand is chuck full of action if gideon loses this one i mean that would be a small miracle i guess well actually that would be a balance what martin needs now is a balance if he could play a single balance that would take care of the entire hand of and there is a mind twist okay so now at least he is deactivating the um the library of alexandria at least that's something and if he now can find a balance or some removal but remember he's played out so much removal there is an attack again Oh, Demonic Tutor probably going to look up a Time Walk or going to look up an Ancestral Recall. Looking up Ancestral Recall here, it is your standard play and it's exactly what happens. Drawing into three new cards, he, ha he has had so much card advantage. Activating the Loa probably with that Ancestral Recall. And I mean, Ancestral Recall is a great answer to a Mind Twist. We saw that in game one and we're seeing that now in game number two. He's on 13, he's going down quickly, quickly, quickly. He's now on 7. And there's not much that can save Martin. Let's see, drawing a card, just passing turn here. And we're going to see six. Oh, do we see some removal? There's a disenchant, at least on the factory, going to three life here. And there's a surrender of Freed. Credits for Martin for, keep, for keeping on playing. Hoping, of course, to see that will we see some removal no he's he's killing himself oh that was funny that was nice martin like that like your style but congratulations to gideon you have won this is your first victory yes picking up the loa pointing to the loa that is true but you know what if you win a dirty loa game why not do it in the finals that will give you your first ever victory at an old school magic gathering tournament congratulations Gideon fantastic you are the camel trophy winner of 2020 great congratulations uh martin well played i'm sure we're going, going to see you back in the finals i think this was for you was final what number 10 i don't know if you see this movie let me know in the comments below is this final number 10 or number 11 I'm, I'm not keeping track anymore. I mean, you've seen so many finals. Great decks, great tournament. Thank you to Bjorn for organizing this tournament in Arnhem. If you want to know more about this, if you want to read more extensive reports about this old school tournament, check the description below and there you will find a link to the website that has all the reports for you ready. Uh, I actually enjoyed myself commentating on these matches, but also playing at the, uh, the tournament myself. I went 3-3. I was hoping to reach top 8, unfortunately uh, I didn't. I actually played against, Mart against Martin's deck as well. I think he beat me 2-1. to one. Very powerful deck, Martin. Very strong and very original brew as well, by the way. Um, for now, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you like to help support the channel, you can do so by watching the video. Hey, you've already done it. Thank you very much. You can also leave a like, leave a comment. It helps. Let me know what you think of the final um, let me know what you think of the tournament. Also, what else helps? Just look look back at older content that I have on my channel. I've got like 170 somewhat videos. It's crazy. 
Also, um, we have Patreon, of course. We have a patron page, so you can also support Timmy Talks financially. So if you can miss something or if you simply just want to have a look and, and see what it means when you support my channel, take a look at my Patreon page. It's very much appreciated. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the patrons that are supporting Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink.